Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting. One day later than we normally uh, were expected to uh, open up, but um, due to the uh, great uh, work of uh, DPW, our, our police, fire, and uh, emergency uh, management group, uh, we're all here today. Um, we opened up earlier in executive session. We're for the purpose of approving executive session minutes and to consider strategy relative contract negotiations with non-union personnel, and we allowed Norma Kamalo and Elaine Lazarus to be present. Um, as per tradition, we now will start the meeting with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. We um, now went to the uh, public forum. If there's any residents uh, out there that uh, we invite them up to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions of the town. Oh, excellent. We have somebody. Come on up. We actually have a stand-up podium. If you feel like sitting, you can sit also. Stand. Do I have to talk into the mic? Absolutely. No. Dale Danny, 25 East Main Street. Um, I have a question about the temporary liquor license um, application that's been changed since last year. And... Um, it, some of the changes just don't make sense. As a 501c3, a nonprofit that's having a one-day event, I was wondering why is it that you cannot accept donations of liquor when you used to be able to accept donations, I think, in the past. You, you specify that you have to buy from a wholesaler. Um, you can't buy from a wholesaler. Uh, it's kind of tricky. Uh, you can buy from Marty's because they have a wholesale license. But if you're looking at, I think you're, I think you're trying to take some of the liquor license things that apply to a, uh, a liquor license and apply it to a, a, a nonprofit, and it doesn't exactly work the same way. So by saying that you have to go to somebody that carries a, that has a, a that's a wholesaler. Um, Atlas Distributor is a wholesaler. They sell Coors beer. So if you want to buy Coors beer, you're telling me I have to go to Atlas Distributors. I can't call Atlas Distributors up and say, oh, will you sell me a case of beer? So we did find that Marty's had a wholesale license because they own Atlantic Beverage. But in the past, we could go anywhere. We any, Anybody could go anywhere they want to retail. buy it. No, yes, retail. retail. Yes. So you're tying somebody's hands up into only going to, you know, one person in town. And I'm not sure why you were doing that. Why can't you accept donations? If I may, through the chair. Um, that particular line in the application form, I don't believe is intended to prohibit any applicant from receiving donations. I can follow that up, yeah. if I may. Yep. In terms of where the alcohol can be secured, that's not a town requirement. It is an APCC requirement. Okay, you do, you have it bolded um, that you cannot accept donations of alcoholic beverages at any time. I will follow up with Maria on that. Okay. But, but let me clarify. So, Mr. Kamala, are you saying ABCC requires the word wholesale, or can the word retailer be included in there just so that it comes from some legitimate distributor? Do you know? The ABCC specifies where and from whom the alcohol can be secured. If I might clarify, the ABCC requires that a a retailer cannot purchase from another retailer. A retailer, when I had a package store license, I had to buy from a wholesaler. That's what the ABCC requires. A one-day license is different. I'm not, I'm, not a re I'm not a retailer. So I'm just trying to purchase alcohol, and you shouldn't specify that I have to purchase it from a wholesaler. It's two, you, 
two different things. You're applying the wrong thing to these 501c3 one-day licenses. Mr. Chair, yes. I would suggest that, that Mr. Kamala get with town council and make sure that we're doing it the proper way and make sure we're doing it the easiest way possible for 501c3s to operate in town and to have fundraisers. I don't have a strong opinion about this, but we have to follow ABCC. Yeah. But if if what we have on the form right now is incorrect, we'll change it to heartbeat. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, if we're setting up unnecessary up. barriers, we don't want to right. do that. If right. there's a good reason for it, then that's one thing. So let's, let's follow through If we can that. fix it, we'll fix it. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And if you did open like a Colola's 2, you probably would have a whole set of <laughs> <laughs> FYI. I don't know if I've mentioned that before. I, ki I kind of miss it. <laughs> or anybody else up in the audience want to come up? <laughs> I actually I actually have one, one quick one. Um, I just want to thank the uh, police department for their uh, dedication and professionalism in the quick apprehension and uh, resolution of uh, yesterday's incident on South Street. I want to thank Chief Lee and Lieutenant Bennett. Chief, I just wonder if you'd come up for a second and uh, um, give us a breakdown on, on just uh, obviously the uh, emergency management does not take snow days. No. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, crime doesn't take a uh, yeah. snow day either. But fortunately, uh, police officers and dispatchers didn't. Uh, yesterday, we had an armed robbery at the Dunkin' Donuts on South Street. Uh, one subject entered the establishment, brandished a knife, and was able to get off with a certain amount of money. Uh, he had a driver waiting for him over in the town hall parking lot. Um, officers right from the start responded to the scene, did an outstanding job with their investigation, looking at videotape, tire tracks, footprints, what have you, and were able to come up with a pretty good suspect pretty quickly. Um, within three hours, they made a... Uh, apprehension of uh, the suspect driver they identified him and then shortly after were able to uh, arrest the uh, suspect who actually committed the armed robbery um, it's a great piece of police work uh, by the men and women of the Hopkinton uh, Police Department and I couldn't be proud of prouder of them especially in the midst of a blizzard going on and able to handle all their other calls uh, I'll just quickly run down the list of everybody was involved it's kind of long because you can remember there was two shifts involved uh, and uh, so we have several dispatchers, detectives, and officers. Uh, the dispatchers is Supervisor Megan DeRod, Nicole Corsi, Jesse Miller, Gerard Jones, Farai Sithole, Kevin Reese, Kylie Davis. Sergeant uh, officers are uh, Sergeant Matt McNeil, Detective William Bush, uh, Bouchard, Detective Greg DeBoer, Officer John Campbell, Officer John Corden, Officer Arthur Schofield, uh, newest officer, Officer Ben Stickney, who's only had uh, two days on the job and <laughs> put the cuffs on the guy. <laughs> like, this doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> we don't want it to. <laughs> officer Peter Hotnez, Lieutenant John Porter, and Lieutenant Joe Bennett. Just a great piece of police work and uh, overall a great week for uh, public safety in general, police, fire, DPW. I'm sure Steve's going to get into it a little bit later. Yes. But I'm very proud of the, uh, the men and women. Thank Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Chief. The, uh, the newest officer uh, reported back to his last department and said, I was here for 10 years and I never saw anything. I'm here one day and I get to cuff him. <laughs> so now they, know, now they know he's on the job. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Now we're going to do some volunteer recognition. The Board of Selectmen will recognize the contributions and volunteer service of a, um, well, Great number of people. This is wonderful. Uh, but uh, Bob Levinson, if you if you have a second, would you come on up and uh, take over for us? The MC. Good evening. Thank you uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Volunteer Recognition Committee, uh, Recognition Advisory Group. Sorry, Mr. Kamala. Uh, if uh, myself, uh, Gene Birchman. Audi, Farida Wallace, and Pam Waxlax. A little bit of background. Uh, we got together to create some more formal and frequent recognition of the substantial amount of volunteering that happens uh, here and makes Hopkinton so special. Uh, the goal was to create a simple and actionable process to ensure that volunteers are recognized for their contribution in a more consistent manner. And it was about a year ago that we asked for and received your approval. We meet periodically, arranged by Ms. Lazarus and uh, 
Mr. Kamalo, uh, we look at nominations and uh, we, we vote on them, and after tonight we'll have formally recognized approximately 30 people. A uh, reminder of the criteria for recognition, uh, significant accomplishment or and or sustained involvement by an unpaid true volunteer uh, that adds to Hopkinson's quality of life. Uh, this is a really nice way to start a meeting, especially after talking about an armed robbery. But um, it's, uh, it's just a feel-good thing. It's, it's good for everybody involved except the people at this time who had to print all the uh, certificates because there were a number of people uh, who were recognized this time. But it's twice. Just so we had to do it twice because we had the date on there for yesterday. Okay. And we wanted to make sure that the dates were exactly right, so we put we redid them into today's date. Right. Thank you. Okay. So it, it's, it's, just, it's just good all around. It's just a good thing. So I'm, I'm really happy to be uh, involved with this. And tonight we have uh, a total of 24 people we're recognizing. Uh, not all here, but we'll mention their names, and uh, those who uh, are here can come on up. Uh, and just before I talk about the nominees, I wanted to say something about uh, the nominators, the people who took the time to do this. And it's, it's a lot of fun to read over the nominations. There's a lot of spirit. There's a lot of warmth of people recognizing uh, their, their fellow residents in town. So it's very nice. Uh, I'd like to begin the first nominee. Uh, this is difficult because all nominees reflect the spirit of Hopkinton, but there's, every once in a while there's uh, someone who personifies that spirit, uh, and I think everybody will agree uh, that Ann Marcy is that uh, personification. Uh, she was nominated by uh, Gail and Alec Levine. Do they happen to be here tonight? It was Anne, but the Levines here, they, they nominated Anne separately. Uh, and I admire the Levines for putting in the time to capture all Annie has done uh, and does for Hopkins. I won't read everything because you want to go home tonight. Uh, <laughs> so I'll summarize uh, the Levines' very lengthy and wonderful nomination of Anne. Uh, and uh, I hope the Levines understand why I needed to condense it. Um, just make sure I get, uh, you know, getting to the highlights. Um, Anne has had many important volunteer roles in Hopkinton, some visible and some behind the scenes. These include her being a valuable Special Olympics coach for 10 years, supervising the program's middle school and high school volunteers, and performing a number of duties at the annual state games. Uh, she's active in Project Just Because, where she's considered practically a fixture there, and she's contributed to its growth and its ability to serve so many families and individuals in Hopkinton. Uh, she volunteers in various roles at the Senior Center. She was a dedicated member of the 300th Committee. Uh, she's active in fundraising for pancreatic cancer research. <coughs> she supports the annual Relay for Life. This is a short list, by the way, okay? Um, she's active in the Hopkinton Historical Society. Uh, she's uh, a long time, was a long time member of the uh, Hopkinton Marathon Committee. She also continues to volunteer. And as Levine said, Annie clearly believes in giving back. There may be other things Annie does around town that we're not aware of. As she is very humble and quiet about her volunteer activities and doesn't expect recognition. This is why she is so deserving of being acknowledged for all her contributions and for the optimistic outlook and immeasurable energy she brings to all that she does. So our first nominee is Annie Mossy. And she plays a mean game of softball. My <laughs> red. <laughs> 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 Don't get too comfortable sitting down, okay? <laughs> because the Friends of Hopkinton are next, recognized by Gene Birchman. Uh, and this is what Gene wrote. Uh, the group worked diligently to raise money, reach out to dozens of local groups and organizations, coordinate fireworks and food trucks, and create a welcoming spirit and community gathering that brought the whole town together. And in a time when the town was rapidly expanding, the opportunity to bring the entire town, young and old, new residents, and long-standing, long-term Hopkins residents together to enjoy a day of community and celebration is so important. The day was so well organized, the fireworks and food trucks were exceptional, exceptional, and the time and effort that this group of people put into the event out of the goodness of their hearts is well-deserving of thanks and recognition. 
uh, the group, you can help me with the figures, but uh, I understand the group raised uh, about $12,000 uh, a nickel at a time uh, through cans. <laughs> and um, because of the significant amount of personal time and effort they all put into the event, uh, the following residents, again, some aren't here, but we'll mention their names. And we, so we mentioned your name, come on up. will be recognized, uh, and many of the names are familiar in town, as they represent uh, what we be would consider a Hopkinton royalty. Uh, first is Pat Lynch. No, Pat. Okay. Uh, Sandy. Not here. Sandy and Rick. No, Janice. Janice. Come on up, Janice. We'll pass these out all at once, okay? Janice. Robinson, Kibby Robinson, Marlene, Petey, Joanne Phipps, Zeddy and Marcy again. Come on back up. Paul Witcher, Dale Danahy, Louis is not here tonight. Ann, click. Louis never comes to these things. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> Dave Nelson, Diane Reagan, Joe Reagan. We planned on Tuesday. John Gardner, Colette Cronin, Don Cronin, Pat O'Brien can't make it, and Pete Edwards. So Pat O'Brien can't make it because he's out coaching <laughs> the girls' varsity basketball game for potentially the state championship tonight. So I got a text from him today saying he was sorry he couldn't make it, but he was – Scott, uh, okay. And Scott okay. Dryden will be added to the list as well. I think in the interest of time, I'll pass out your certificates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Robert, Robert, you want to set everybody up for a for yeah, photo? Yeah, you want to front, folks, and make a few, a big few right there. Yeah. How about an upside down end? Yeah, the slug number one would be behind the y'all. So come forward just like you're behind us. So the selectmen can be behind you. And come over here. No, we're running this back then. Are you getting your own space? I'll get you close. Yeah, I hope y'all look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't see you. I'll get you back. Bob, you coming in here? Um, hey, Bob, you coming in here? 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 Bob, you can you go back just a second? Alright, okay. Alright, everybody's really looking great. Alright? And you're all, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of love. And, uh, I'm seeing a lot of love for the town of Hopkins in there, too. I see great smiles and no talking. No talking yet. And a lot of what were you going to say, you want to do some karaoke for this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. All right, nice, beautiful, beautiful people, lovely people, lovely smiles, and lots of love. Thank you so much. Thank, all right. Right. Thank, Thank you, you all very much. much. Thank you, friend. Hey, now we get to do it all over again. Yeah, just a couple. I'll make it work. Um, Barbara Beale's not here. Should I read if they're not here? Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Um, so they do say that we've got a call from the other driver. Yeah, okay. okay. We have a couple more I'll go through, so we'll take up too much time. Uh, Barbara Beale, weren't sure if she was going to make it tonight. We're going to recognize her anyway. She was nominated by Darlene Hayes for her 20 years of contribution to the town. Uh, Barbara serves on the Board of 
the Friends of Hopkinton Seniors, Friends of the Hopkinton Library, and Hopkinton Women's Club, and has served as past presidents of all of those organizations. According to Darlene, in, in Barbara's past life, she owned a bakery in Connecticut uh, where uh, Barb's Bars, or as we say around here, Bob's Bars, were a top seller. Um, and if she knew someone was ill, she'd pass those out. She continues to do that here. Um, she's done things for the library fundraiser, for Poly Arts, um, in organized book sales, fundraisers for Senior Center, and she has been called kind, generous, and selfless, which is a description of a lot of people around here, but it's nice she was picked out, and uh, we'll get her certificate to her. Uh, Jerry Spar is not here, I don't believe. Um, I'm disappointed because I was I was moved by reading the nomination of his, uh, he was nominated by his daughter, which I thought was like the sweetest thing I've ever seen. So uh, it, his daughter Olivia uh, wrote about uh, him and uh, his contributions. Here are some highlights from what Olivia said in a very thoughtful and warm nomination form. Uh, currently, Jerry is president of Ho the Hopkinton Basketball Association. Uh, he's done this for the last five years and he's done wonders for the program. Uh, he's introduced many innovations and events, and as uh, Olivia said, he's devoted countless hours of time into ensuring that the Youth Basketball League is at its best. When one team of the program is not able to find a coach for the season, Jerry immediately took it upon himself to coach an another team. Uh, he coaches his two te sons' teams as well, and uh, she said he devotes time to the parks and recreation and finally she said so many kids in Hopkinton have been positively impacted by my dad uh, and having him as coach oftentimes many people do not recognize the dedication that my dad puts into the town he has truly made serving Hopkinton a top priority of his and I feel that he deserves recognition for all the time and dedication he has put into making Hopkinton a better place uh, and so do we and uh, again now uh, maybe we'll nominate her for doing such a great job of the nomination it's very very <laughs> sweet and finally uh, Mike Bolson Mike here uh, Mike was nominated <laughs> Mike was nominated by Peter Legoy uh, Mike has devoted considerable time and effort uh, keeping the center trail and other areas in the town cleaned up, cleared of leaves, and in overall great shape. Uh, anyone who uses the trail benefits from all his hard work uh, maintaining the trail and for which he has earned the unofficial title of Trail Master. Uh, his efforts have made this trail, which is uh, now rapidly became a town asset, uh, he's made it even better. And after he's done this at no cost, he's done this all at no cost to the town. He also mows other areas that he sees fit to keep the town uh, Nice and presentable, so uh, recognize him. Congratulations. I just want to say that I'm not alone. This past week I had two high school young gentlemen come and ask me if there's anything they could do. One of them was Brian's son. The other one was um, Jonathan Sims from my neighborhood. And... So I gave them a couple of backpack blowers and they took off and blew off all the sticks from the winter. Yeah. So, not alone. Great. Thank you very <laughs> much. Great. So I've, I've worked with Mike for the last, I don't know, 10 years. I've known him my whole life. And this award is great for Mike, but people have no idea the depth of the work that Mike's done and, and how much of his heart he's put into the into the woods of Hopkinton. And uh, so I'll... Personally, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure working with you for the last 10 years, and I look forward for 20 more. Uh, and if you need a backpack blower, you can borrow mine. <laughs> Get more kids out there. <clears throat> thanks, Mike. So thank you all. Thanks to the committee. Thanks for your support. Thanks, thank you, said, everybody, we have a formal recognition process now. You find someone, you want to just <coughs> send some nice words. It takes you two minutes to go on the town website and nominate people. We had a high-class problem this time with so many people. It was mm. great. I hope mm. to have that every time and keep this going because it, it just recognizes what makes the town special. Thanks, thank you all. Sure. Absolutely. Come on up. Of course. Has Mr. Kamalo, has Mr. Levinson been nominated for one of these awards yet? I nominated the government, yeah. Perfect. I just want to make sure of that. I, I just have, I just want to make sure that we call, we spell his name correctly. Yes. Yeah.
Thank you for giving me just a minute. Okay, I just want to certainly thank um, the um, Volunteer Recognition Committee and the Board of Selectmen and Jean Birchman. Uh, Jean really helped us right when we were beginning to talk about the Family Day last year. She encouraged us. She showed her in all out enthusiasm. She gave us guidance. Um, you know, she was just terrific. And I'm working with such a great group of people and you're Bob's left, but if they are full of love for the town. And we are the people who were behind uh, raising money and selling um, a lot of things for the anniversary and putting on the parade. And we are our newest of adventure, of course, is the family day. We just did the karaoke, uh, which was really a lot of fun. We will have a table at the marathon uh, weekend committee, uh, weekend. Um, and um, I just want to say that, yes, we are all about uh, community spirit and you know it's a great town and we many of us grew up here many of us are are just so enthusiastic about the town and I think anybody who meets a friend meaning a friend a friend of Hopkinton will see that enthusiasm that spirit and uh, I want to thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you. Oh, what a fun part of the meeting okay now we're going to go to uh, consent agenda the uh, Board of Selectmen will consider approving the uh, 227-18 Board of Selectmen meeting, uh, um, meeting minutes. A marathon fund request. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving marathon fund request for $9,607 for the backstop and inline lift and tension model netting for the high school baseball field. Um, <coughs> the request is for the uh, Hopton Public Schools reimbursement for a purchase that was approved. A temp temporary alcohol license. The Board of Select will consider approving a temporary alcohol license for the wines and malts only for, for Denise and, and Jackie as uh, on behalf of the St. John's Evangelist Church Youth Group for a spaghetti dinner fundraiser to support youth activities at the Parish Center on Saturday, April 7, 2018 from 6 until 10 p.m. Marty's will supply the alcohol and a TIP certified volunteer from St. John's will serve the alcohol. The applicant is also requesting a fee waiver and uh, we inspect the St. Charles House for March 15, 2018. And the fourth one is a marathon uh, training run. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving the use of local roads for a training run in advance of the 2018 Boston Marathon on March 24, 2018 from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. The request includes blocking or obstructing some local roads, temporary no parking areas, and placement of 10 porta Porta John's on Marathon Way and a temporary signage. Uh, does anybody want to break out any of these? I would break out uh, number two, please. Okay. I would like to break out number four, just an opportunity okay. for a comment, please. Okay. So the chair will uh, looking for a motion to pass uh, items one and three. Moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Those two pass. Okay. Number two. <coughs> yeah, I sat in on this marathon fund um, meeting the other day. Um, this is the <coughs> 9,600 bucks for backstop and the inline lift and tension model netting for the high school baseball field. There's a new pavilion style. Um, structure being put behind the existing baseball field, uh, the varsity baseball field, and it's a <clears throat> something that was uh, privately funded for the most part. Uh, they figure it's going to cost about ninety thousand dollars. It's a beautiful brick um, backstop with with bleachers and a roof over it. Um, so I know that the town has never had anything like this. Uh, for the baseball games. I've been up and I've watched hundreds of them. So it's a great idea. The kicker is it's going to be named after Tom McIntyre <clears throat> and the, this group, this small group has come together and, and raised about 60,000 of the 90,000 privately of, uh, of what's needed for donations and for, uh, for capital. And this is uh, this $9,600 will put the poles <coughs> and the netting providing a safety 
area to, to have this pavilion right behind home plate um, for years and years and years. It's a, it's a, a quality piece of equipment. Uh, there were three um, estimates that were taken and the marathon uh, fund committee decided that they would go ahead and uh, and approve this pending our, our approval. So I think it's a great idea, notwithstanding the name Tom McIntyre on it, I think it's a great idea because having gone up, you stand on the third baseline and watch and it's obstructed view and, the, you know, when there is a playoff game, which there are a lot, um, you know, there's no seating and it's just, it's it's a great thing and, and it, it's a, architecturally, it, it, it's fits in beautifully. It looks a lot almost like Camden Yards over down in Baltimore. So it's a beautifully constructed piece and uh, I think it's great to see that, uh, that, that the Marathon Fund is behind them as well. Yeah, I, um, I, I am in support of this. It's a good sized chunk of money out of the Marathon Fund, but this really is a community public safety asset. Um, you go to baseball games now and they're putting in this netting everywhere they can because because of the public safety need. And I know I've uh, attended a lot of the Cape Cod baseball league games and uh, come close to having my head taken off once or twice because there wasn't netting with with a uh, with a fly ball or a uh, you know a, a foul ball. So I think this is uh, you know something that will really provide an asset and uh, very important public safety for the town. You should ditch your born loyalty and come up to Falmouth and watch. No, there. no, There's we're netting. in Gateman. There's netting, netting all over the place. It's nice and safe oh, in we Falmouth. We got it now. <laughs> Brian, because of this. Mr. Chair, I move that the board approve the marathon fund request for 9607 for backstop mainline lift and tension model netting for the high school baseball field. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, this is, you know, the funny part about this. If Tommy were here, we'd be just saying, hey, who put that up? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. And we do it in about three years. We notice uh, it for three years. Okay. Um, Ms. Wright, number four. Um, yeah, Marathon Training Run. I mean, I have no no argument with the Marathon Training Run. It's a great event. It helps, uh, you know, train some of our charity charity runners. Um, I was hoping there was going to be somebody here tonight just to answer some questions that wasn't able to happen. But I just want to state for the record, uh, and I believe we have received assurance that uh, community needs will also be addressed by this, uh, one of them being um, where there are going to be road closures. I would hope that there will be adequate public notification of those road closures so that it people aren't inconvenienced or they're, they're aware if, if sections of the road are, are shut down during important hours. And uh, specifically, I know last year we did have a problem with a litter litter situation and uh, we have been assured that that will be addressed and someone will be responsible for that. Um, I want to make sure that happens and want to state publicly what has been promised to uh, the community that uh, it will be a good event this year with nothing left uh, on the premises that shouldn't be there. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, and and this is actually a transition year. It's, the BAA has, has facilitated this. Um, to allow the uh, charity runners a uh, a uh, test run, and uh, but beginning next year, the uh, twenty six point two foundation and those members said that they were going to uh, be the new facilitators to make sure that the town ha did have more control over this and it wasn't being controlled from Boston. So um, hopefully, it, uh, this 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 transition year and the next year, we actually have a lot more control. So with that, the chair entertain a motion to. Um, uh, approve the uh, use of local roads for the Boston Marathon training run. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. Um, no parking signs on Granite Street. The board is let me review and consider approving proposed no parking signs on a portion of Granite Street. Ms. Lazarus, could you enlighten us? Many of you may have noticed a new trail has been constructed in the fall and winter from Granite Street to the south on the old railroad bed. And as part of that, um, there was a small parking area added right off Granite Street. And uh, we're anticipating people will want to access the trail. And um, 
Granite Street is a narrow uh, scenic road and it's a busy road. So there's been some, some concerns that people may be tempted to park along Granite Street, but we have provided a parking area for people. And as part of this, um, requesting that um, about 10 no parking signs be erected along both sides of the road between Hayden Row and Deer Run, except for in front of the old cemetery. So that's still available for people who want to access the cemetery. So where is the trail access? If you're going in Granite Street, cemetery is on the right. Where is the trail access? It's on your, almost right? immediately on your left. It's on the opposite Let's side. As soon as you make the turn, it's wide. Okay. Now, is that a scenic road? It is a scenic road. So are 10, 10 signs sounds like an awful lot of signs. Well, it's about an 825-foot-long stretch of roadway there. So it's, it's spread out quite a bit. Okay, so that, that turnout that's at the old cemetery that is for parking, that will continue to be allowed. Yes, it will. And, as, and if I recall, there are a few parking spaces near the trailhead so that we can, so people can still park. Yes. That's good. I'd love to see if we could somehow put in place a policy for every sign that goes up somewhere in town, another sign that hasn't been used or is no longer valid for whatever reason, comes down in town. As I drive around Hopkinton, uh, and we're not as bad as other areas of, of the state, there's a lot of signage up there I know. You know, throughout town that just doesn't need to be there anymore, for whatever reason. Um, and I'd love to see us, you know, one for one kind of rule go, in, go into effect, because that would drive us to review and make sure, we one, we have an inventory of all the different signs in town, and then two, take those down that don't need to be up. Um, you know, because it's all a little bit of eye pollution here, a little bit of eye clutter there. We've got a beautiful community, and I'd just like to, I'd love to see if we can manage that a little bit better, a little bit tighter. So we, we are quite sure we need all ten signs. Just sounds like a lot of signs. Is there any room to start out with fewer, and if there are infractions, add? It just, it just seems like sign pollution sure. right off the top. Yeah, that's not a problem. Come on up here, since it's yeah, 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 it was. Uh, <coughs> Will these signs also double to prohibit people from parking for the illegal use of Echo Lake? Does it? No parking is no parking. I know, but uh, <laughs> is, are there signs there that say no parking for? It? I don't know, I guess you'd know, wouldn't you, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> Peter Boy, 21 Hayden Row, uh, Clerk of the Works for the Echo Trail Project. I actually met out there with Mike Manser. I was thinking fewer signs would be a good thing, but that was the number that Mike thought was appropriate. And as our BBW highway guy, I sort of went with what he thought was needed. Um, the idea would be to have no parking from that, basically from Hayden Row all the way to Deer Run. Um, and that would, there are a few people who park along there, um, less people because there was an issue with a little vandalism that happened there. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to be working with the Deer Run neighbors on parking there. That may be a, more of a please don't park here for trail use or for the dog park, which is going to be behind that. But, um, yeah. So the, the purpose of these signs was a request from the neighbors on Granite. And if you've been out there, the traffic does tend to fly through that stretch. And so this is trying to, for safety reasons and also to address neighbors' concerns. Can we have off-street parking at, at the Deer Run entrance to that? Is, did we have, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's definitely wide enough. Um, I don't think the Deer Run neighbors would appreciate that, but certainly we're going to be talking to them about that whole concept, parking and, and other issues. Um, the idea would be to have the parking that we're going to have for the dog park and for the trailhead over at 192 oh, right. Hayden Row, yep. and there should be plenty of parking there for both uses. And then just, unfortunately, some signage needed to direct people to where they need to go. So, so we can keep, can keep those signs small. So 10 signs, I'm assuming that's five per side. Do you know roughly how Something far like apart that. those are, Peter? I don't know what the distance is. Again, Mike, yeah. there's, there's, I'm Trust sure, Mike. rules and regs. Yeah. for that and we'll just be adhering to those excellent thank you okay. thanks All right. very briefly through you mr chairman just wanted to assure uh selectman her we do have a sign inventory a complete sign inventory in town that we use to make sure that if a sign goes down we know what sign was there we check its age for reflectivity and the like so we do have such a such a list should you ever 
So if I randomly were driving around and I saw a sign that looked like it was 100 years old and applied to horses crossing in 3 in the morning or something like that, I could call you and we could chat about it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Might be a couple of Does that have... include yard sale signs? <laughs> yeah, actually, you can do that online. See, click, fix. Actually, we're going to be talking about that in a little while. You can do that again so the uh, citizens of Hopkinton can actually just go right on there and send, send the issue right in, and it's taken care of at Town Hall. But uh, Josh is actually going to talk about that in a few minutes. Cool. Thanks, John. <coughs> okay. Um, no parking signs. Uh, draft budget, capital plan discussion. Board of Selectmen receive an. Uh, we need to. What? Oh, yeah, we have to, we should make a motion on Yes, I forgot there was an action item. Yes. So I move to. Uh, Approve the proposed no parking signs on that portion of Granite Street as written. Okay. Uh, leaving out the uh, Granite Street Cemetery. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Oh, it hasn't been seconded. Oh, okay. Second. All right. Now, any further discussion? And I'm not hearing any. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any extensions? <coughs> Motion carries. All right, now we can move on to the um, draft budget capital plan. The board of selectmen will receive an update from the town manager on the proposed 2019 operating and capital budget requests. Mr. Kamalo. Yes, um, briefly, at the conclusion of the meeting that the selectmen held, uh, in fact, this was a working budget uh, meeting last Friday, uh, the board directed the town manager to... Uh, work with the school department and school administration on a version of the budget uh, that shows no more than a 5% tax impact on the average taxpayer. And in addition, you ask that the budget reflect the same proportional split as the FY18 budget between town and schools. Uh, to that end, I wanted to report a couple things. One, I just came from a meeting with the school administration staff. Uh, this was our preliminary meeting in which we actually identified how we were going to proceed with this discussion. And then secondly, I also wanted to share with the board that uh, in, in thinking through the second component um, of the board's direction, namely uh, maintaining the same proportional split as the FY18 budget, uh, we decided it was appropriate that we do not include debt service, both excluded and unexcluded, in that calculation. So, can you repeat that one more time, please? The operating budget has different components, which include debt service. Right. We decided in calculating the proportional split between the towns within the town and school departments that we exclude debt service. Debt service includes both excluded debt and non-excluded debt. Here's why. We thought, f for one, uh, it would not be fair to do that. And then number two, um, the huge portion of debt service is excluded debt. The public has already said they will not be taxed above and beyond the proposition two and a half allowance. Those are the two reasons as to why we excluded that number. So, John, can I go here? Oh, absolutely. So, if we take the debt service out of the discussion, are we still working towards a 5% overall net tax impact to the taxpayers? Again, to or be. Or are we now talking about 3.5% because a big chunk of it was debt service? To be clear, I said there were two components. The exclusion of debt service is only in relation to calculating the proportional share. We did not do that when we, in fact, remember when we talked. Okay, gotcha. So exactly. in, in taking that out to calculate the proportional share yeah. of that, whatever that number is, to get the 5%, yes. what, what does that do to the proportional share? If it in, was 50-50, what will that do now? 60-40, um, I think. It's in, in fact, we all agree it's 60 40, 62, it's 62.4 for the schools and the rest for the town. So 62 and 38. Yeah. 
Um, 62.4. 62.4. That's what he yeah. said, 62.4 and yeah. what, 31.6? Yep. Okay. But at our meeting, we were, we were pretty much saying 60-40. Anyway, yeah. yeah. um, and has everyone agreed to that that was in this meeting? Again, okay, this was our preliminary meeting at which we shared this formula. We received their preliminary input. I did not hear any adverse comments regarding the formulation of this calculation. However, we also said we're open to suggestions. All right, good, thanks. So I want to make sure I'm understanding that. So you are saying that the debt service is going to be on top of that, correct? The no. five percent? No. no, no, no. I'm, no, not, no, I'm no, still no. not following okay, The five so percent is going to be it's across the board or yes. excluding the debt service? The five percent includes debt service. Mm -hmm. And even on Friday, we okay. identified we identified that right. debt service makes up so it is three percent of that five percent. It's only the split. Yeah. And so, uh, again, uh, as I said to the board on Friday, um, we together uh, have been reviewing the budget requests, and uh, there are many good suggestions that have been put forth. And so, um, I'm, I'm advising the board that the recommendation that the board will finally receive from the town manager will make an honest effort. Uh, incorporating the suggestions that we have received. Excellent. How often are you guys going to meet till we get this sorted out? Um, are we? It, yeah, <laughs> we will be busy. Um, it, it, remember, and I think this was also discussed uh, on Friday, um, that we, as a first step, need to go back to our teams. These are the department heads, the principals, and so forth. Um, and and also, uh, as part of this process, uh, we want to go back. We, we want to afford the department heads the opportunity to um, collaborate and share information with their respective boards. So this is going to be a very busy uh, period for us, and, and we're ready for it. Okay. Excellent. All right. The um, mm -hmm. pilot, did you go on to the website? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, pilot Town website. Josh Grissetti, Director of uh, Information Technology, will update the board on the town's pilot website, including C Clicks Fish mm -hmm. Issue Reporting Dashboard. And Welcome, Josh. Josh. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for helping us out with the uh, passwords, too. Ah. Yeah, and Josh, feel, feel free either you want to stand or sit down, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, we just did that for, for yeah. yeah, take a seat, take a seat, but don't get too comfortable. <laughs> Never uh, again, thank you, thank you for having me. Um, so we've had the idea of. Um, refreshing the website for quite a while now and have been able to, to actually you know make some good progress on that recently we first launched the new pilot site about a month ago um, only on the public use computers at the library so this was done um, purposefully as a collaboration between IT and the library as a way to try to get some new patrons into the newly renovated library right some folks that may not otherwise visit the library but wanted to be some of the first to get eyes on the website um, to, to take a visit to the library so we uh, we ran that for about a week and a half and then about three weeks ago made the pilot site accessible on the internet to all residents um, anybody online <coughs> so it's important to note that right now the pilot site is being hosted on different servers than our current live website so this gives us a way to direct people to the new site to explore uh, but we're not yet forcing them to use that site so it's it's in it's live um, next to our existing site so you can still see our existing site at hopkintonma.gov um, from that home page you're directed and given the option to to go over to the new pilot site or if you know that URL pilot.hopkintonma.gov you you may navigate directly 
um, to the new site. And this is a, a page that we took out of the playbook um, from the state and also from the city of Worcester. Um, both both recently launched new websites and um, did so in this in this pilot format. Um, so the purpose being, we give residents the opportunity to provide feedback as early in the process as possible um, to allow us to make additional changes before we do that full replacement um, with where we now only have the, the, the new site and the old site is, is completely taken offline. Um, so from the launch, we've, we've made sure to ask people and reminded them that this is a working sample website. Um, but again, we wanted to give them that preview as early as possible to get as much feedback as possible so that we could make changes um, and make sure that we're giving people uh, w what they want. Um, to that point, even though we're not yet um, at the full replacement stage, we're already actively working with the developer on round two of the homepage, um, making changes based on the feedback that we've received already in this short uh, three, four week time frame from residents. Um, overall, the new site's been well received, with the majority of the feedback being very positive. Um, and again, we've already gotten a good amount of um, constructive comments and ideas, many of which have already been rolled into the pilot. Um, so we're updating that site, uh, you know, daily, weekly, as as we get feedback. Um, I wanted to highlight some of the key goals that we had in mind as we developed the site from the beginning. Uh, the first was was. Um, incorporating the public safety police and fire websites into the same location. So right now they have their own URL, their own site. There's a very different look and feel between the Hopkinton Town homepage, police, and fire. We wanted to try to have some, some similar branding across across town so that it was, it was obvious to people that they were looking at a Hopkinton web property. Um, we implemented responsive design, which allows us to keep um, kind of easy navigation no matter what type of device somebody is using to view the website. Um, so we do know, if we look back the past year, approximately 75% of our users are on a desktop computer. Um, but we are seeing, even though it's only 25% on mobile and tablet, we're seeing more and more people accessing the site those ways. So um, we, we wanted to keep the design responsive, and that's going with best practice in the industry right now. Easier navigation, including a streamlined top menu, uh, quick links, uh, a much less cluttered home page, something that had a, a nice structured design uh, to make it easier to find what people are looking for, um, specifically with a dedicated news and update section, rather than just kind of seeing what happens to be the, the hot press release of the day, kind of plastered in, uh, in kind of big, big font right at the top of the page. Um, and then a, another key goal from the beginning was to ensure that we were including a number of transparency enhancements. And um, I, I think we've done a great job here. We have a new partnership with VizGov, which is a um, powerful budget visualization tool. Uh, this allows residents to see exactly where their tax dollars are going, how that money is being spent, breakdowns, uh, percentages, uh, as well as a tool that allows the resident to input their um, their tax and actually see the dollars and cents uh, breakdown. So uh, the average taxpayer can see how much they're paying for snow and ice removal or uh, general government services um, for a particular school, um, so on and so forth. Uh, we do have a second budgeting tool that's in the works right now and scheduled to be released prior to town meeting um, that'll allow people to see some of those numbers just, just viewed differently. Um, we've done a relaunch of the town's partnership with C Click Fix. So, this is a tool that we've had available um, for quite some time now. But um, as part of the rebranding of the website, have done a relaunch of this tool. This is an online transparency portal that allows residents to easily report non emergency or non urgent service requests. Um, so, they can do this through a um, widget built into the, into the website itself. Or they also have an app um, for both Apple and Android, um, so users can use the app. It's all um, geography-based, so you need an address or a, a location. So the benefit of using the app on a, um, on a smartphone is it automatically knows exactly where you are. Uh, and this is an app that many other communities use as well. So if you're a user of this um, program, of this app, 
Um, it doesn't matter if you, you know, live or work in Hopkinton or live or work in Boston, but you're passing through a community on your commute or out for dinner, whatever it may be, uh, the app knows where you are. So when you put that service request in, it knows the community to report that issue to. We also have a brand new boards and committee database, um, which I know is something that's that's also been on the radar for, for quite a while, um, with a much easier application process, um, a better transparency to board and committee chairs in terms of contact information, how to get in touch with those people, um, what seats may be um, coming up as vacant in, in upcoming months, um, and again, a much easier application process. We also have a publicly posted town provided email address for the chair of each town board or committee um, as well as an improved visual department board and committee directory with easy to find phone numbers for each department right there on the on the master directory page um, so if you're looking to find out who you need to call quick you've got one page you've got all the phone numbers um, easy to easy to find that contact information um, and so with all these new features um, especially again in the transparency area, the, the, the budget tools, the C-click fix. Our plan starting in April is to do a weekly focus feature um, on each of these new sections. So really kind of spend a week, um, you know, through the website, through social media, letting people know that these tools exist and how they can, how they can use these tools. Um, I know that was kind of a lot of me talking. Non-stop straight. So any any um, questions or comments? Anything I can answer for you? None for me. I'm uh, counting on you for this technology. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I, if I may, I was um, I was actually hoping that you were going to pull up your laptop and have it hooked in so that the townspeople might be able to see what that's why I was just pulled up for, for the members here what C click fix looked like and what maybe the the new website was going to look like just so we could introduce them to some of the things you know if we can do that at a, at a, at a, at a oh, yeah. another meeting I mean, just I so that they could yeah. you know because okay. you know, you did all this work and, and you used you know 4,000 words and you could have just taken us taken people through it and then they'll see uh, how much better it is than the previous one I'd, so if I'd you don't if uh, recommend people visit the existing homepage yes. and right at the top where it says click here to see the new site um, click there to see the new site I think uh, to your point uh, mr. chair there's no better way to experience that than on your own so I'd, I I am happy to come back and happy to, to um, show that up on a screen um, but I think this is the reason why we launched this at the library and have launched <coughs> not residents from their home so that they can they can take it for a test drive. I can try to sell you a car all day long, but you're going to want to get in, right? So. Okay. Yes. I, I appreciate it. was just a couple of meetings ago I happened to make the comment about board and committee contacts were not available, and, you know, you, you pick right up on it. So I, I really appreciate that. And, um, and I was just comment too, that on the old website, you know, part of the clutter is there was a lot of stuff that never got taken down. It was old. So hopefully, however you manage the new one, um, you know, if it's applications for uh, marathon charity numbers, and we did that back in uh, December, <laughs> it won't be up there anymore. But thank you, Josh, for uh, addressing some of those things right off. Thank you. Excellent. Anything? I think, you know, years ago, anytime you went to a public website, whether it be the state, you know, federal, local, what have you, all kinds of different things out there. Uh, they always seem to be the most difficult to navigate. But in recent years, as I go into these different places and do different things uh, online, it seems like the public websites, because I do a lot of that with work too, uh, are becoming much easier to read and follow, and they guide you through it much better. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. I think you know, simplifying and making it easier for everybody is great, and I'm sure that's what we're working on. Thank you. You, you're still taking input. Oh, a a absolutely. Yeah, certainly. The more um, the, the the more feedback, the better. I mean, this is a website for the residents of Hopkinton, so the the more that um, um, the more they can they can give us info on what they want to see or changes that they want to see made, new features that they want to see. Absolutely, and we have a, a form for that right on the new website, um, so they can fill that out. We've been. Um, you do have the ability to keep your feedback anonymous. Um, 
However, up until uh, the, the the aftermath of this last storm, I think within the past 24, 48 hours, we've had a couple new comments um, that I haven't been able to re respond to directly. But prior to the last 24, 48 hours, we've also responded back to um, every comment that we've gotten so long as they provide contact information, okay. um, both thanking them and addressing their, their questions or um, comments. So, so when's go live? Um, it's going to depend on the feedback that we continue to get. Um, I think if we continue to get um, constant feedback about changes that people want to see, we're going to try to want to roll those changes into the new site before we do the full replacement. Um, saying that, we do want to be able to do these, these highlight features starting in April next month. And so we're targeting to have the complete overhaul done um, sometime before the end of the fiscal year. Okay, great. Yeah, because you know, the you know the enemy of getting anything done is perfection. And if we keep pushing it off, we've been talking about this now for a couple of years, and anything's going to be better than you know than what we've got now. Not that not that right now is horrible. It, it works. I can you know you're in it enough, you can get around. Yeah, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, just the, the sooner the better. We agree. Just, just a quick question. I know it's much cleaner. Um, I can't recall. Do you still have something that says what would you like to do? Like if you can't figure out from what's there where to go, the old one had something you could put in that would get you to where you needed to be. So, yeah, um, we have two ways to address that. Um, one is we do have a um, one of the top menu links is directly to an FAQs um, and we've the decision for what to put on that FAQ has been driven by analytics in terms of what are some of the most frequently used pages mm -hmm. on our existing website um, so we've used that data to get a better understanding of how residents use the current website mm -hmm. and what pages they may be looking for um, on the new website so there is an FAQ link right on the home page uh, we also have a search on the new home page that's uh, driven by Google. So I like to think it's um, they know a thing or two about how to find things. Okay. Does that does that answer your well? I mean, question, I was thinking I wasn't thinking of it as a question as much as I got gone on to post a meeting. Can't remember how I'm supposed to where I'm supposed to go. You just put in post a meeting or you know find find videos of meeting of an activity you want to do more than a question it was helpful when you could just put in what it is you want to do and it would show you where to but that's yeah, covered so, that. so okay. yeah that that's our intention with the with the FAQ link and again we used um we used the analytics that we had on the existing site to see what were the most frequently visited pages mm -hmm. um so we're we're looking at that as a, as a power of numbers thing um, in terms of the, the greater residents, what are most people looking to do on the website. Okay, so I'm on the old website. Where do I go to, how do I get to the new one? Uh, you, if you just scroll down a tiny bit past the storm info. Yeah, under your finger, pilot. Beautiful. Pilot, yeah. mm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, nice, okay. That's, that looks, uh, wow, that's contemporary. <laughs> Thank hope you. That, hope that's a good thing. Is that a logo at the top? It looks weird. It's, um. It looks like somebody else's logo. <laughs> it's, it looks like they're working on it. They're working on it. So that, that, that's been um, the, the single most polarizing um, piece of the new design is, has been that, um, that logo. So there's been some consideration of taking that down. We've um, that was a attempt to take the town seal and um, while not losing the the concept or look and feel of it, trying to to modernize uh, the town seal. So we've yeah, there's no reason to modernize it. <laughs> That's the town seal. I mean, what's what's the town seal. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll have that down for you then if that's the uh, if that's the feature. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I'm glad I brought that up. Okay. All right, with that, that, with that, <laughs> let's just Okay, if nobody else any more questions for Josh, let's uh, let him get on his way. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Beautiful. Josh, thank you very much for thank coming you. in. Thanks for Thank you for your feedback and yeah. for having me. Thanks, thanks, thanks for guiding yeah. me on to this. This is thank great. Thank you, Josh. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. And in fact, as, as Josh is walking away, <laughs> I, I don't want anybody thinking that 
the attempt was to modernize and change the town seal. What we were trying to do was to find the most appropriate digital copy of the town seal. That's what we're trying to do. So noted. We'll work on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it into a gift. <laughs> yeah. Norman sells the sizzle, not just the steak. <laughs> <laughs> in the That's car. Why we love them. Okay. Um, next up, uh, the Hopton Emergency Management Group update. Hopton Emergency Man Group, Management Group will update the town's response to the recent nor'easter uh, winter storm Quinn, uh, the okay. combination of wet, heavy snow. Actually, we had the second one after that. That was, that was the old one. And the wind is And the combination of wet, heavy <laughs> snow, strong winds, down trees, cut off power to at least 25% of the town's ever source customers. Yeah, I, I really do appreciate everything you guys did. You know, the the uh, the coordination and everything to uh, move the tree limbs, the obstructions, you know, restoring and the and how they facilitated and advocated the restoration of power was um, was great. I was out uh, three and a half days, but uh, uh, it, we managed. Hey, we're New Englanders. I'd like to think how prepared you are. You know, that's our team there. So thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you ready for the report? Um, so I kind of expanded a little bit seeing uh, we, we got into this report with the uh, one, uh, two of the storms, and then we had the third. I figured I'd brief you on all three storms. Um, first one was kind of minor, but it did set the stage for all the work we did. So um, to start, just uh, want to thank our group, Hopkins Emergency Management Group, um, a few of the people are sitting here uh, Norman and Elaine and I got Josh and Dave and John so uh, great team effort going into this storm there's always a lot to learn from it but I was uh, pretty proud at the uh, especially with the middle storm what we faced um, they did great work so kind of our formula is to uh, prepare respond and then recover um, Luckily for each of these events, we had a couple of days really good notice from the National Weather Service and from MEMA, uh, kind of letting us know what would happen. It got tweaked up on almost all three events, but we had a pretty good idea two days in advance that we had significant events in front of us and that would affect the town. Um, that allows us in the uh, preparing uh, part of it to um, get our plan together, get our staffing in place, and make sure our equipment is uh, ready for the response. So the first storm, uh, we had an initial notification uh, February 28th from MEMA to start thinking. The storm arrived March 2nd. The storm event started on Friday night. It was high winds. Luckily, the snow did not accumulate much on that first storm, and that was very nice. Um, it was a northeaster, and uh, it took down the, the main piece was taking down tree limbs and trees that affected the community. From that storm, we uh, experienced um, a major outage and blockage of road on Lumber Street. We had uh, a large tree come down on College Street that uh, undermined the road, and we had uh, blockage on Front Street. Um, that's stuff we're used to dealing with, so it uh, gave us a good warm-up. The response to that was the DPW was the primary uh, attack dog. They uh, go after cutting uh, trees and limb removal. Uh, with everything except for what's in the power lines. Uh, they also had to, for that first storm, worry about College Street. It was a significant tree that came down. It was right up against the road in a low spot, so any water running down there would immediately start undermining the road. So they got a contractor in quick to get the tree out of the way, and then they did some emergency uh, shoring of the road so they wouldn't lose it. Um, Saturday, let's see, Saturday we went into the event working with Eversource. Lumber Street was the biggest issue at that point. There was, if you didn't see it, we tried to get some good social media pitches out. There was a couple of trees that snapped off after a large uh, tree on the roadside had gone over and put pressure on the lines. So a couple of the poles had snapped off. Um, that day, Eversource responded with a couple of... Um, watch trucks I'll call them and they just kind of looked for the uh, the scene and um, because of its broken poles we have to wait for Verizon to come in set poles before Eversource can do their work so there's a little bit of that's where I kind of do my magic and try to get as much pressure on I, on them as I can to um, get the logistics done um, 
the dilemma they had was Hawkington was a small piece of a much larger storm down by Plymouth and in that area, so there was a strain on resources, and that's what was in, they were facing. So um, we we got the area safe, isolated. Um, Sunday morning, there was Eversource crews ready to fix the problem. We waited for Verizon for a while while they installed two pole uh, installed two poles. And then the uh, power is restored by Sunday night. Um, the impact to the community was the trees and the limbs, the road closure, and the 18 uh, power outages in the area of Lumber Street. And um, the recovery for this was um, the opening of the streets, the reconstruction of College Street. The DPW worked on that a few days later, and we had to get rid of some minor debris. First storm. Any questions that helps get you going, or you want me to dive into the big one? Good, good. Go okay. here. <clears throat> so the second storm was named Quinn. Um, it was a very significant storm. Again, we had two days' notice. It, the forecast kept ramping up, and our group would just talk about the ramp up of the storm. Um, it had clearly was going to have the high winds plus the snow as we got into the day before. Um, again, we put a plan in place, staffing in place. Um, this, that night, the big difference was the wetness of the snow. Mm -hmm. Probably everybody heard. Um, I was almost lucky in the sense I lost power at 12:30 at night. I heard a large explosion out by my street. I got up. I could just hear trees in the beginning of the storm starting to break, mm -hmm. and I said, "This is a different storm. Mm -hmm. Time to go to work." Mm -hmm. um, when I went uptown by one o'clock, all the public safety crews were already getting deployed to calls and um, by two o'clock get on my timeline here by two o'clock we had several trees down just checking the Eversource site we already had 850 people without power um, we I put out information to our group and to the schools to start preparing for a much more significant storm that was even uh, forecasted and we had noticed that the Elmwood school had lost power already that's one of our critical facilities um, just in that time period, we also had a police cruiser that was um, struck by a limb falling and caused some damage. So again, this is early in the storm, but it kind of did send the tone that it was a different storm. Um, by 4.52, we had multiple trees down, multiple uh, reports of wires burning and wires down. Um, we just quickly talked with the schools, and I told them that it's not safe to have school or travel at that point. Mm -hmm. And it was so bad by 4.52 that we started to, I worked with uh, Josh and social media and the creation of a code red notification because it was truly unsafe for the public to go outside at that point. So by 6 a.m. of that, we had uh, 30 roads either impacted, partially obstructed, or closed. Uh, over 50 tree limbs and trees down, 2,200 2, res and 45 residents were without power, and we had launched a code red just to get them around 6 o'clock so they wouldn't go outside and walk into that. What we saw was a quite hazardous environment. So just to work the timeline, 7 a.m., um, we had a group conference call, worked with all our team members, ramped up the fact that we had to get much more information out. Um, worked with the uh, initial priorities that we set. Um, there was such an extensive amount of road blockage and um, debris that we um, got a Eversource trouble truck and a tree crew, the DPW, um, Mike Manser and myself, and we literally just went to open roads, cut and clear public safety, number one priority, and our, our group had talked about it. While I was working on that, we just kind of reviewed. We had a critical infrastructure out. Golden Pond had lost power. They have backup generator, but that's quite a challenge in their system when they're on backup power. Um, our crew just talked about uh, we were evaluating restoration efforts and getting out information to the public. And um, we had already, you might have seen on the uh, social media, Josh had launched several PSAs before the storm on things like generator safety, carbon monoxide, warnings, things like that. So. I was pretty happy going into the second storm that we had the preparation out. So Thursday, that's the day of the majority of the storm, was cut and clear in Golden Pond. Um, 
Just to give you an idea, a couple of the key events of Thursday is our public safety dispatch while they were operating, giving us information, demonstrating the road closures. They had an emergency where Southboro and Ashland lost their PSAPs, which is their 911 systems, to their towns. So our community is the backup for them, and they took over all their 911 calls. Um, at the same, in that same time period, they had a power outage in their generator and system worked wonderfully. I think I did see Chief Lee sweat a little bit, but I won't tease him. He was in the dispatch center just keeping an eye on things, keeping me informed. He wasn't in the gym? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, as, and as that all kicked in, um, we had a fire that day also. So you can um, kind of afterwards, just as I got back from the fire, I, I, I noticed how well, when the, and I didn't know the 911 backup had kicked in and the uh, kind of the preparation, the redundancy, the capacity we built into that public uh, safety dispatch was a uh, home run. I just said, wow, that, that was amazing to take all that on. And they really didn't miss a beat. Um, so Eversource by the end of the day is starting their assessment. We got some social media out. Um, the social media piece that Josh, um, he is my uh, guru on that, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping you saw more than me because I was on the road a lot, but he had uh, quite a few posts out, 13 uh, notices and posts. Um, we had over 250 social media posts that went out, resulting in 1,500 engagements by our measurement, and um, there was over 1,100 likes during these interactions, and we were doing everything from uh, status reports, pictures of the incidents, uh, weather conditions, public safety information. The, um, the, he put a, on the top of the town's banner, there was a message on the home page that uh, he just constantly kept up with 24 times. We had a change during that seven day period of what the, was happening in the town. So going into Friday, um, still had this huge outage issue the, uh, one of the main feeders on Spring Street going into Pond was destroyed, so they had six trucks from Eversource there working on that. Um, the rest of the town was kind of quiet on Friday. So the good thing was they were working on the main feeds, and that would have taken care of the majority of the outages. Um, our group met again, looked at our priorities. Um, restoration was now the number one priority. The streets were all open, but we had a large number of people in the town without power. Um, in that time, we also evaluated that we had town facilities open. Uh, people had the opportunity to go and charge their phones. They had the opportunity to get warm. Um, the senior center was operating, and they were making, uh, on Friday, they had lunches available for seniors, and the library was running for the rest of the town's public. So we did not have any requests at that point um, for anybody looking for additional services, and we were just evaluating whether we needed some type of sheltering capacity or anything else for the town at that point. Um, we didn't get much restoration by the end Friday. That was my one disappointment during the storm. Um, at the end of the work they did on Pond Street and Spring Street, um, there was a hope to get it open. I didn't really announce that, but that was the hope. Uh, it didn't come through Friday, so I think that was kind of like my one disappointment trying to get that for the com uh, community, but it didn't happen. Uh, that's another source job, size of the job, scope of what they were facing. Um, so going into Saturday, Eversource did quite a bit of assessing on Friday, and Saturday they did have um, an extraordinary amount of response to the town. The truck, the town was filled with Eversource trucks. They finished the main um, power line that with the uh, feeds to the town. They were repaired. Most of the uh, load got on by 1 o'clock, and by uh, 8 o'clock we had all but an area of like Winter Street and some of Fruit Street, uh, and then the minor service breaks that were done. So that got us from, say, 2,000 to 200 outages. Um, going into Sunday, they still had uh, Eversource trucks in town, and we completed all of the outages on Sunday. Um, I know you'll have a lot of questions, just a personal evaluation. Um, I thought they did well in their response. I'd 
in talking with them, I would like to have seen their assessment a little earlier done and their ability to move everything up like one day. I just think it's within their ability, but um, and that's something I'll keep talking to them about it based on what I witnessed. But um, I thought they did a, a really good job. I just feel like, like I told you about the amount of information we had and being prepared, I just felt like they could get one day earlier on Friday, have a little more momentum. Personal opinion there. They being Eversource? Yeah. Um, but they did... Who they worked with me well. Um, later on, you'll just hear me say they, they you know, that being able to do what we did Thursday, um, many towns didn't get done. Um, you know, we had access to the entire town by three o'clock, so that was. Um, I felt like that was a major accomplishment. Just a quick. So um, we had about 200 issues from the public safety s side of it, and then DPW Mike. Mike's log basically is another 420 trees and limbs throughout the town. So just to give you a scope of, this is like um, the analogy would be a major hurricane damage for trees and tree limbs. The the recovery portion of that storm, and, it, and we're just touching the surface on it, but the, the, the quick piece is the amount of debris that's on the road. Um, Mike's already, um, and along with John, has done some early assessments where they've worked with where the town can store some of the brush they're uh, going to be able to handle, and that's they've done some work with JV Sawmill. And uh, they've also been uh, working um, with Western Nurseries, uh, looking to see if we could expand our normal scope of brush uh, to have another site and have that delivered. So Josh has pushed that out in social media. I believe they made an arrangement. I won't even tell you that I know it because I've been off on another tangent, but it, it, that's one thing for the town, and that was great at Western Nurseries to offer that up because you don't necessarily want all the normal patterns of everybody burning all of this might create its own issue. Everybody trying to bring this to higher reason might not be the room or capacity for that. So having this option was really nice to have it come on the radar. There's a lot of information there. I, the Storm 3 is going to be a little quicker. Do you want, to, want me to finish up on Storm 3? Any questions there? So uh, are we going to come back to all this, or do you want to do it storm by storm? There's a lot of information there, so you're welcome to. Sure, why don't we jump in? A few so, a couple of quick thoughts on Storm Two. I can't keep them all straight in my head at yep. this point. Um, there are still some limbs down along major roads in town, like right on the edge. I think coming down West Main, coming down off the hill. There's, yep. you know, you're everyone's kind of skirting around a little bit here and there. So, I'm sure we got a plan to get on that, right? Um, uh, I was not aware, and and I, I follow Josh on Twitter. Uh, I, I see his stuff and I retweet every now and then, but I wasn't aware that we could have gone somewhere to warm up. I didn't. I didn't think of that, and so maybe I wasn't looking for it. And maybe you put it out on Twitter and different places, but I didn't see it, so I didn't know that. And I'm sitting here now thinking about how cold it was a couple of those nights and lying in front of the fireplace. Sure, uh, we probably would have done that. So maybe, uh, maybe just more repetitive. You know, somehow getting that information out. But I just, I didn't know. So just sure. FYI, eyes one person. Um, I thought when ever I thought Eversource did a great job the last three two weeks in general. Yep. They really did. Friday night though, they set an expectation that they'd have power back to our neighborhood by eight thirty p.m. through a robocall. I didn't call them; they called me. Mm -hmm. and said, we're going to have power back by eight thirty on Friday. And so at ten thirty, I'm like, all right, this isn't happening. I better throw another log on the fire and right. get another blanket for the floor right there. Um, so I think setting that expectation and then not delivering wasn't the best move, but I get, you know, a lot was going on there, but anyway. Just it seems like they might have had a mixed message to the community, and uh, so your area got that Friday message. Most of the other com areas of the community got Saturday and 8, because that was their statewide. We got that first. Yeah. We got a Saturday at 8, right. and then they moved it first, up. and yep. then they moved it to Friday. Like, okay, this is going in the right direction. This is all good. <laughs> right. And then there was some backtracking there, so I was I right, told them okay. that there was some of that messaging going out. Yeah, I got it. And then uh, just the last observation from my perspective anyway, um, so Storm 2 is the heavy wet snow Thursday morning, and it kind of cleared, I think, didn't it? Because I was out snow blowing Thursday morning, mm -hmm. and I think it was actually almost nice out. It came in overnight. I can't remember. 
But I did the end of my driveway, like where they plow by, and I cleaned all that out. And I was going back and forth the, the, on the main part of the driveway up to the house. And I got up to the end towards the house, and I turned around, and there was a massive tree that came down right across Elizabeth Road, oh, wow. right where I was underneath doing oh, my driveway, oh, wow. that would have killed me, I'm sure. Right. And then the plow guys came by, and they pushed it out away for me so we could get in and out of the car and just it's sitting over in my neighbor's yard yeah. right now. But I shouldn't have been out there Thursday morning that quickly after all this happened. Because if I was down there at that end, it would absolutely would have crushed me. Yep. You know, so then I saw my kids running out there. I'm like, no, 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 this is not safe to get back inside. So mm -hmm. just a personal story there that you know, next time I'm going to wait a little bit longer in that kind of storm. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just bizarre. Well, I think people didn't realize Thursday morning. How bad it was! Oh, it wasn't until yeah. yeah, he started. Oh no! All the I, I, no, I, I, heard the I heard I heard the branches snapping all around my house. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know all that. I just knew there was some. Obviously, we had lost power. But knuckles cracking. To see that huge thing, thing at the end of the driveway, and I was just there. I'm like, oh my gosh! That's probably one of the few nights I ever got a little nervous outside of my car, where you could hear the trees going. And, and again, that's why we decided to code red. Get the, let's get this information out at 6 a.m. to let every person gets as much awareness as they can. It was that dangerous. In, in, in fact, one of the most poignant moments during our many meetings was when Mike Mensa described to us his experience where he was going in to chain snow, I mean, um, chainsaw cut, yeah, chainsaw cut some trees and all around him stuff was snapping and you, we all know Mike, he doesn't get scared easily. <laughs> yeah. There's no oak tree bigger than Mike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but just hearing him describe what was happening around him was yeah. really scary. Sure. Yeah. So if I could just have a second. So I've known the chief, the fire chief, for a long time. And I started as like a volunteer on the fire department. And the fire chief, who was just a firefighter at the time, said I should go to EMT school. So I said, I don't have any money for that. So he gave me the money for EMT school. So I'm, I can remember coming back, and I would say, hey, let's go to Cornell's. He's like, don't you have a test on Saturday? We would sit there, and he would drill me on anatomy and physiology and hit the... How, how this fire chief's made up is he drills you on procedure, on policy, on technique, when something like this happens, it's just, it's drilled into you so much, you just don't even realize that you know what you're doing. And you go out and you do a, a bang up job. And it doesn't surprise me at all how smooth this went with, based on how I know the fire chief. And, uh, and <clears throat> there's no one I'd rather have at the helm when something like this happens than you notwithstanding our past, which is checkered at best. Um, but I know that for the town, for me personally and for the town, there's no one I'd rather have it on, as the helm, at the helm of this uh, emergency management group because this is his entire life, is, is, is fire safety and public safety and, and doing this and, and generations, his grandfather, his father. This is, this is their whole lineage. And this is, Hopkins doesn't understand what a, what a, a great, jackpot we have in someone like this because he isn't in it for the job he didn't move here from West Virginia to take the job to make a little bit of money he did it because he loves it and he's the reason I'm here as a selectman because of some of the people here had to do well we won't get into that um, so I, I just think it, it's great I have no reservations whatsoever I always follow Twitter or Facebook or whatever or the, the robocalls that come out, I know that he's got the best interest in the town, and I know he does a bang-up job. That's all I have to say about that. That's right. Excellent. Worst. Excellent. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I can't top that. And clearly, you just did a Herculean job, and it hopefully is not often that we find ourselves in, in this kind of situation with just everything, everything coming at once. Um, you know, to the point about Eversource, um, 
you know, I, I do know that there were other communities that had even more power outages that we than we did. And I know our, our old summer residence, which is down in the Upper Cape, um, Wareham area, they were 97% out. And we were getting phone calls, updates from them on that property, and they were saying, you know, letting you know how much percentage was restored and how much was still out for several days. So, you know, I kept thinking... There are people that are that are even worse off than we are when you got ninety seven percent in your community. But um, the only thing I, I, I would mention, and I talk with the chief about, and on top of all this, we had a beautiful service for uh, Chief McMillan on Saturday in, in the midst of all this, which was beautifully executed. But um, you know, we did talk about this briefly. Uh, hopefully, we're never in this situation again. But uh, whether we would want to see about making some kind of a place open whether it's a senior center with some cots not maybe the full-blown I know it's a big deal to do a full emergency shelter service with hot meals and all the rest um, but just a place where there were some cots if you wanted to bring a blanket and a pillow and have a warm place to stay overnight because you know when it's one day you can kind of be a good sport and, and tough it out. But when it goes on two and three days, and this is winter time, it's not summer hurricane, this is winter, and people's homes are at 40 degrees, that is getting very cold. And I know I talk with some people, older people, um, a couple days at 40 degrees, you, you just can't get warm. You can't even make a hot cup of tea, and the cold just gets, gets into you. I, I also know we've got homes now in town, beautiful new homes, but the way they're constructed, it's all open, open cathedral ceilings, open floor plan. Having a fire in the fireplace, the heat just goes. Even the fire in the fireplace doesn't keep you warm. Our old house, we can shut the doors in the living room and put a log on, and we're nice and toasty. But um, I, I really think going on more than one day, uh, it would have been good to just have some cots in the senior center that if you want to come and try to sleep, you can stay warm overnight because several days at 40 degrees is really cold. So, something to think about. And maybe nobody will use it. I don't know. Everybody, there's no place like home, but I have a feeling after, you know, day two at 40 degrees, you might want to, you might want to give it a try. So, I can't do everything and I can't say enough about what you did. Thanks. So mine has more to do with what happened to our neighboring town. So you and I have talked about it a few times about um, a uh, mobile command center or a communications platform, you know, trying to see if the state or the feds have a uh, cast off. I think that this is something that we should really um, move up uh, on the burner a little bit, move it to a front burner to look at something like this because, um, you know, if, if, if that power didn't kick back on, and we were responsible for three times, then then you know where's the where's the fourth time? You know, and, and considering that that we have several mobile command centers here for that one day um, in April, you know, there's um, and I know that the state just updated there, so they might have an old one left over. Yeah, you know, it's something for us to to really look at. And you did a great job finding us that uh, ladder truck, and so I have faith that you can, you can sure. find us a, a mobile uh, communications command center that uh, that we'd be able to uh, kick right up for something like this. The, the state would actually, they have a mobile PSAP unit, and, and literally from Marathon Day, that's one of our res reserves. So in that moment, I could literally call into MEMA and tell them um, that we've had that type of an outage. So the redundancy that's there worked. And there is more redundancy that I can call into MEMA and say our area needs this, and, and that equipment is there for PSAPs, um, the fire um, Department of Fire Services has a communications vehicle that I could have in 30 minutes. <coughs> We're involved in a district consortium, District 14 <coughs> Fire Chiefs, which has a mobile unit, which I use for, like, our dive team operations or some of those when we went down to the Cape to do the structural collapse piece, they come in. So many of that, those are all short terms, like I can get that activated in an hour. We can be up fully operational in an hour. Um, and the redundancy did work. You know, two towns lost, the third town was in place. You know, they all have to lose pieces. Mm -hmm. um, your pieces are so noted. Um, 
So, Ms. Kamala. Yeah, in fact, if I may add, <coughs> um, in terms of uh, Mr. Cortino's comment, I think one of the resiliency um, components that this town has built is that from the technology side, <coughs> we, uh, we, we, are, we are already working on putting in place the technology infrastructure that will allow this to happen should they should the need arise and then in terms of uh, um selectman rights uh, a comment regarding shelters i can assure the community that should the need arise for the director of our emergency services to activate a shelter we're ready to do that um, it's, it's just that, and we had ma many conversations regarding this topic as to whether the the, the need was there or not. Um, however, what we're hearing today is people may not have known. Um, You'd have to depend on word of mouth if you don't have the, you know, internet service or whatever, or you put the signs. We, we didn't even have or we, or didn't, or we didn't have landlines. You know, you put some of the big there. flashing signs of downtown if people are out. I I don't know. I mean it. When you're in that circumstance, it's not perfect, but whether it's word of mouth or, or whatever. Um. Yeah. And, and also on, on resiliency, I, I can share with you that there's some wonderful stories yeah. that have come down to town hall regarding what makes Hopkinton a great community to live, work, and play in. Number one, there's so many people who have told us how they took in their neighbors. Uh, and so when we were mentioning hotels, their response was, well, our neighbors took care of us. That is always great. Yeah. The second piece, the story never gets told. I always say we cannot advertise any businesses, but this is the time to say it. The work that we did, the great work that we did, would not have been possible without the support of the local businesses. Number one, staying open and making sure that food is available for the individual for the responders number two the three companies in town yeah. the three of them Joe. yeah Joe American climbers and the third one John what's the third one yeah JB yes they, they did a tremendous job coordinating with 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 Mike and then thirdly this never gets told the local businesses do respond very well when there is a state emergency requesting or requiring that we stay off roads. The, our businesses here do cooperate. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and also, above all, part of our resilience, I think, is the feedback that we receive from the community. There are people who are calling in to say, great job, you're doing very well, keep this going. And similarly, there are also other people who are calling in and saying, do a better job. We're fine with that. Yeah. Um, it needs to be said. The chief made reference to the Eversource response. I think the, there was something different this time around in terms of how they responded. Number one, they made the local contact person available to the chief. Mm. And thanks to the police chief, he made sure he didn't leave town. <laughs> um, the, 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 the second piece, too, is that I think this time around they were... They were responsive to the multiple calls that came in from the town as well as from our legislative team. Uh, Representative Dagma and Senator Spilka did do some advocacy for, for the town. Uh, overall, though, we would like to see them improve their response, specifically with regard to how timely they can provide the assessment teams. Um, but overall, yes, there is some, there, there's, there's some differences that we saw that were advantageous to the community. However, there's still room for improvement. Good to hear. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. No, um, storm I'm three. Just, you are on the last storm. You want me to brief you a little bit, or why not? Got the, how are we doing on time? I, I I put away 40 minutes for you. All right. So I have and to. We're getting close. I have, <laughs> I have to correct one direction though. So it got focused on me some, and um, that's not even being humble. It was done by everybody else. I actually just I depended on them being ready to do their job. It wasn't even a time to watch and make sure everybody was doing okay. So I had Mike Manser and his crew did so much work. 
Um, the police officers made sure that every tree crew was operating. Um, the details were in place. I, Chief Lee, I just said it can't. There can't be a procedural piece in the way here. It just has to happen. Um, my crew, they went and did the fire. I just went down and made sure things were good, and they, uh, it was a challenging event that they had. They got all the stuff done. i um, very proud of them. So the help I got from the emergency management group, um, again, I just said this needs to get done, and I had to leave to focus on Eversource. So please don't lose sight of that. I didn't do anything heroic. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was coming, too. Yeah, but it's real, though. I know. Um, so the last storm, um, I'll go real quick. So 20-inch plus storm. Um, the governor early uh, stated that he uh, was going to get the uh, state workers off the road and urge everybody to stay off. That helped a lot with the storm. We had an early cancellation of school and town offices based on all the information we had. Right away, we um, lost some streets like Front Street um, and, a, and Granite Street, um, but overall there wasn't a lot of problems with the last storm. 18 power outages, I think we got most of them up. There was a little bit of critical infrastructure issue with uh, one of our wells. The generator failed for uh, some reason, and uh, Eric's working on that. But we got Eversource in and got that all back up and running again. The response, again, DPW had the brunt of the work, uh, snow, re <coughs> snow removal and uh, tree and um, limb work. Eversource crews got uh, Front Street uh, at my begging, ready for school at least, so we didn't have to detour buses around. And um, just to Josh and um, Lieutenant Bennett got together with our uh, emergency management, like a little side team, and we got a, a different tracking system running for this storm, which was kind of neat. We used a piece of our um, town GIS people forms. The the storm before having two or three hundred impacts it was hard to see or read on a sheet where everything was so josh has a system where it all plotted on maps we could use color coding and we could just see every single incident highlight road blockages it's similar to what we do for the marathon in the state mapping uh, during marathon day so josh and uh, lieutenant bennett got that running in our public safety dispatch last summer and we just did it as a pilot we ran kind of side by side and said let's see what this will do for the storm and it was pretty good so you'll see that kind of going forward and uh, we can share that with people too, share it with the community at some point so uh, quick special thanks um, just the uh, patience and understanding of the community we had very little backlash for a three and a half day power outage I was like amazed I thought it was going to get a lot worse and people were understanding um, thank you the uh, dedication and hard work of all the uh, the town staff that supported us and again my emergency management group was awesome uh, Eversource, this guy Russ is our new uh, trouble truck in town, and the guy saved our day for um, that Thursday of the big storm. He really so I got to get a shout out to him and write a letter to Eversource on okay. him. He saved us, and then um, and Eversource response was really um, it was much better. And then finally, just getting specific, like Mike Manser and the DPW Chief Lee's team for um, HPD and their dispatchers were really good for us to just keep flowing and um, special thanks to like my deputy chief running the fire department while I was out uh, doing this part of my gig so um, that's it thank you thanks chief any more questions Ron? beautiful thank you very much chief really do appreciate it excellent so we're still on schedule beautiful Okay, um, Mr. Kamalo, the annual town meeting articles. We'll discuss and review uh, our own town meeting articles. I, I heard, I heard a uh, rumor that we were behind on our dates, but uh, according to this, we were ahead uh, on the draft for it was on 227 and uh, 313. The working sessions go, and we don't have to have it done till 327. Actually, isn't it? The so, Independent had yeah. a nasty political cartoon that we'd missed all these dates. And yeah, I, idea, I, I don't quite understand where that's coming from. But anyway, we thank you, Ruth. Thanks for keeping us on track. And, wouldn't oh. take criticism where it's warranted, but I don't oh, well. I didn't think we'd missed anything. But anyway, so... Um, <clears throat> please uh, take us through. What do we got? Yeah, in, in fact, this is a simple reminder. Um, individual board members, please... Um, 
if you have any comments on the draft warrant, uh, reach out to uh, the town manager's office. We we want to get them ready for the meeting on the 27th so that at least the board can um, make the decisions with regard to the articles that the board is sponsoring. Okay. Okay. And <coughs> board liaison reports and invites. Mr. Hara. I have nothing to report at this time. That's on. <coughs> yeah, um, had another meeting with the elementary school building committee. Uh, everything's going great there. Uh, I had a schedule under budget. Uh, what more you can ask for? And then we had another uh, uh, meeting uh, day before yesterday. Uh, for this 26.2 foundation, they had a little little get together at the uh, Start Line Brewery to discuss a few things. Um, that's a that's a pretty well oiled machine right there too. So that's all I have. In, in fact, if I may, you may on that topic, um, Mr. Tedstone. Um, part of the event was the announcement of the first corporate sponsorship of the 26.2 foundation and it happens those corporations are Hopkinton corporations oh, good. start line and western yeah. nurseries yeah. old and new yeah. western yeah. nursery has been here forever start lines new but it's nice to see uh, Hopkinton blood uh, stay involved with this so uh, yeah. and excellent work by Mr. Kilduff as well yeah, work towards that international marathon center yeah. Ms. Wright. I don't really have anything. I think at the last meeting I reported that the Center School Reuse Team had had a very good, pretty well-attended public forum on, I think it was the 3rd of February, um, and the surveys have been out there as well. And so then since that time, the team's been waiting for an opportunity to get together and kind of, you know, unpack everything that came out of that. But between, <laughs> between snowstorms and the chair having the flu uh it keeps getting postponed and they they're actually meeting tonight is the first time so i'm obviously missing that meeting so i don't have anything new to report other than the than the form on february 4, uh, 3rd i know they will be planning additional public forums and anybody out there that has thoughts on the center school reuse do the survey or come to the forum because first and foremost they, they do want input from the community as a, as a starting point so that's all I have for now well, you also um, represented uh, Hopkinton at the uh, five towns oh five anything, town board anything, of selectmen meeting that we uh, anything that, attend anything that, how, do, how do we stack up against the uh, our neighbors uh, well okay I'll leave it I think I'll save that for now okay <laughs> I, I have nothing to report on this. Uh, Mr. Kamalo, town manager's report. Y yes. Um, I have three updates for the board. If I can get... Yes, here we go. Um, starting off with uh, the Main Street Corridor Project. Um, and I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing this in this order because, of, for you know, we have town staff that are available here to to participate. And if we can get them home earlier, the better. Um, our intention here on the Mansfield Corridor Project is not to get into any detailed discussion, but rather to give you an indication as to what we have been working on since the mass DOT public hearing. Five things. Uh, we have now removed the westbound through lane on Main Street at uh, Cedar Street. And the, this is in response to the feedback that we received from the public that uh, post the Main Street intersection, having the two uh, lanes merge might be confusing and may create conflicts. Secondly, we have added a southbound right turn lane on Cedar Street at Main Street. Um, this again was in response to the feedback that we received coming from the post office towards the main uh, the main street intersection. We now have a right turn lane uh, that might 
yeah, that might entail some conversations or may require some conversations with the owner of the gas station. And then thirdly, the bike lane. Um, we have provided a two-way separated bicycle path on the southerly side of Main Street, east of Cedar Street, uh, to Hayden Raw Street, thus eliminating the separated path on the northerly side of this section. Uh, this was through um, a conversation and a meeting that we had with the Upper Charles Trails Committee. And then, fourthly, perhaps this is the first one I should have mentioned, the redesign, the elimination of the uh, through lane has yielded an additional 17 parking spaces. And our effort was to concentrate the majority of those spaces towards the intersection area. Uh, I, I think this is going to be well received by the businesses who are continuing to do our analysis and hopefully will convince MassDOT to accept this change. And then finally, uh, I think as was discussed previously and voted on by the board, uh, we now have the definitive plans regarding re-establishing Marathon Way adjacent to the town common. So overall, those are the five big changes we're working on, and hopefully we'll come back to the board with a specific design uh, ahead of our uh, finalization of these changes with uh, Mass So, Mr. You mentioned the excuse me. You mentioned the bike lane. Yes. Is that an elevated bike lane or is that at grade bike a at grade bike lane? Do you that detail yet? Post the main street intersection going towards the common. It's elevated from the uh, main street. So from the road surface, it's elevated just for the bikes. Yeah. And then it, it elevates again to the sidewalk, so it's a, a, a tri tier type of profile. And that's based on uh, the standard design from, from Mass Dot and Fed Stand, but would they entertain just a bike lane at grade level with the roadway? My understanding is no. It, it then becomes an on, becomes a shared bike lane. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't want to put funding at risk for anything like that. But I think we, if, at least from one person sitting here, I'd be interested in knowing if we could get that bike lane throughout this project to be at the grade level. Just multi more, a little bit more multi-purpose, a little less exclusive, and while I, I, I ride bikes, I love them, I don't know how much use an elevated bikeway is going to get in Hopkinton Center. It's elevated from a, the point of, just as a sidewalk is elevated from the road, it, it's only, it might be three inch difference, and it also helps significantly the drainage. Okay, let's just check it out and see. I'd be interested in just getting a little bit more detail on that. Pros and cons. Okay, please. Catch I mean, there yeah. wasn't a letter that came to a concerned citizen from DOT who said that they would entertain even the more traditional on-ground painted lanes that we didn't have to commit to these elevated bike lanes if the town as a whole felt a simpler construct would be better for us. So yeah. I think we should take the opportunity to discuss that before it's too late. Yeah, we will. My point is we, we have 17,000 residents living in Hopkinton, and I think it's important that we have a design that it meets as may, the needs of, of as many of those folks as possible. I don't want to start the whole thing all over again. I want to get this thing built. But I'm just concerned that a dedicated bike lane is for a very small subset of Hopkinton residents, and our job is to represent 17,000. And and so I just, as much as I love riding bikes, I just don't know if that, that makes sense in that corridor. Yeah. Well, to yeah, the point of the catch, I'm sorry, the, the catch basin to them would be in the bike lines. Well, that's what we can't. Yeah, no, 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 that's what I'm just saying. Let's check it out, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. But the catch basins have been on the road forever, and. Yeah. So the new Cook Cumlin, you know when you put it back, you don't put the, the grates going with the road. You put it across, and you ride over the catch basin. It's no big deal. Well, I also know that a lot of towns are doing these bike lanes, but they're not doing the raised things. There's a lot of new bike lanes going in, and they're managing to accommodate the drainage without this additional level of, in, of construction. So we should right, look right, at okay. it. Yeah, okay. so, so, yeah, we'll so look we'll into it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay, moving on. Uh, town hall repairs. We have a quick photo slide show uh, just to share with the board. Are we connected? Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had it yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Oh, we can show that. For the, we can show that the next meeting. Just can you give us yeah. a couple quick questions on it? Give us on the website yeah, we'll post. We'll send it to you by email. Give us a yeah. rundown. Yeah. Um, significant progress has been made. Uh, I believe um, um, as of as of as of as of this week, uh, all the the sheeting has, has been done um, from top to bottom. She rock. Yeah, she rock. And then the uh, insulation um, has been also um, installed, uh, including areas where we wanted uh, uh, special techniques to be used. The floor is sheetrock, I hope. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, um, and, 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 and thing, uh, things are moving along on schedule. Is that a drop ceiling going in on all three floors? Uh, yes. Have we, have we put the grid in yet? Okay. Yeah. Uh, is all the electrical done on the rough side? Yes. Any finish there yet? Any finish Any electrical finishing? work done yet? No. Uh, no, the electro uh, fire alarm can be set of all is done, um, but all the wiring has been done. Yeah. All the rough wiring. Yeah. yeah. The uh, outlet locations, all the light switch locations are done, and all the wiring for the lights have been done. So all the electrical rough has been done. It's just you know wiring up the right individual sockets and outlets. Big field. Yeah, stuff's pigtailed. And Mr. Here, if you're if you're offering donations, we are still accepting donations. So I can't talk about my profession <laughs> on this board. <laughs> um, okay. okay. So I think we had a date of May eighteenth, eighteenth for completion. Yeah. Is that we still on target for that? Still on target. We also realize that May eighteenth is. It's going to be going. We'll be going through an election and just after town meeting. Um, so we, we're aiming for that date. We're on target. Uh, the the actual move in may be end of May, considering we'll be in the middle of town meeting and. Uh, okay. Thank you. And the election. My only question is about um, the uh, planning department and and all of that. Is, are they going to be able to move back in with all the files and all that stuff? No, f files, f files are not coming back on <laughs> to the third floor. Um, we, we are working on a plan where some of the documents perhaps may be in the basement or we will use uh, Fruit Street. Good. Yeah. We, should, we should look at something that, that's a little bit more, a little more comprehensive look at, uh, at how that whole group is going to be able to work. Because, you know, for, for anybody doing building in town to have the records at one place and the people at the other can be difficult. Yeah. But we we'll look at that one later on. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Dave on Town Hall? No, you said it all. Okay. Great. Entertainment policy. Moving on. Um my whole goal today is to receive the board's authorization to schedule a public hearing for uh, this policy. Uh, what has happened uh, from the last time the board reviewed the policy to now is that I had a detailed um, discussion and review meeting with uh, Selectman uh, Wright. Um, and based on that conversation as well as putting together some of the previous comments from, from the board, um, we we have since streamlined the presentation to begin with. All the individual different type of, um, of, of, of entertainment licenses um, each have their own section, okay. including definition and the application process. So we are no longer commingling things. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two, there was also, an, I think, feedback from the board that perhaps we were, we were getting too detailed and lost in, 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 in in, in, in issues that the board perhaps should leave to the, to, to the business people to decide. Our, our response to that um, specifically was, one, we've eliminated any references to um, 
the oral presentations, oh, live entertainment. Story that, that's that storytelling and, and impromptu um, poetry. Uh, that that that's no longer addressed in 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 the in in, in this policy. Similarly, um, we 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 accepted the fact that the town currently has its own policies regarding televisions and entertainment that comes along with uh, with with uh, with uh, common fit or alcohol licenses. So we're, we're not addressing that. And then the 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 last big piece or big change that we made was clearly identifying exceptions. There were questions asked, what happens at the common? What happens is with religious um, 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 events? What happens with town and school related events? We have now clearly identified those exceptions. So big picture, those are the changes that we have, we, we have made. Uh, we believe so far we have, again, streamlined the, pros, the, the, the policy to, we have simplified issues. And then also, one of the comments regarding whether we were micromanaging this process, our reaction, and in fact this is up to the board to decide, we have created a, a, a two-tiered process where for some applications that are low level, that the board delegate that uh, approval process to the town manager's office. Um, however, if the town manager is, identifies issues that may lead to a denial of any permit, that, that, that even those that, that, that tier of applications be then escalated to the Board of Selectmen. So we believe with these adjustments, we're ready for prime time, we're ready to hold the public hearing. Um, this is a policy that is responsive. We believe it's now um, uh, timely that we, uh, we we process this because they are not, they, there is an inquiry in the office regarding approving a, uh, a, a, a permit for a carnival coming to town. Mr. Why do we have to have a public hearing to review this policy? Uh, again, we're a public entity. Uh, these are policies that affect the community. It's not required, but I think it's best management practice that at least we have a public hearing. You know, to that point, the issue about poetry or storytelling, that was only brought to our attention because the owner of Bittersweet came to this board as a business person and mentioned that it was <coughs> ridiculous. I mean, so sometimes these public hearings do give valuable input to you from the people that are going to be affected by it. But to the opposite of that is CJ came here and now it's being addressed. So, you know, I mean, there's not like 17,000 of us coming in, jump, jumping in on the entertainment policy. There's just very specific people that get involved in something like this. Well, as long as we're reaching out to whoever those various entities are, I mean, I'm just trying to streamline the process to get this yeah, done. And get it done. I don't have a problem with public hearing. I'm a, that's fine. If that's what we want to do, we do it. But just in terms of, you know, efficiency, you know, we do lots of public hearings. <coughs> Four people show up and they've got a very vested interest in why they're there and they say their piece and we're out. So, you know, whatever you want to do, but I just don't know what that's going to really add, I guess is my point. Ms. Wright? Well, I just, I just always think it's better to be responsive to the public. You don't necessarily have to act on what they say, but if it's something that particularly this affects some of our businesses, um, you know, it is one more piece I recognize, but I think it's always good to hear from from the people who are going to be affected by this before you, you know, before you enact it. Judge Sir, I'm good. See, I, I, I'm stuck in the middle here because, uh, you know, I think it's more important for us to get this policy out there um, because we pulled out a lot of um, uh, roadblocks and things that, that, that made it uh, tougher for the, for the um, applicants. You know, made the, we made the, uh, application a lot cleaner and separated mm -hmm. adult entertainment from every single application. That's so they didn't have to check out no adult entertainment. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I understand the, 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 the uh, nice luxury of having a, a public hearing because somebody may see something else mm -hmm. before we roll it out. But then again, to Mr. Hurst's point, we could always just pull it right back in a week later and modify it again. And, but at least this this allows people to start using this 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 new form because that that last one has been has been driving us nuts for a few years now. So would the public hearing be done in the confines or within the typical board of selectmen meeting, or are we going to do something separate? 
we could schedule it for the next board of selectmen meeting, which is the 27th. Okay, then we can meet up. We can vote on it. We can take action on it right away. Exactly. Yeah, I'm okay. With that. <clears throat> okay, you good with that one? Yeah. No. Did so. I'm good. Beautiful. Let's uh, set it up for the 27th. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else? That's all I have. Okay, now. I actually have one. I need to go back to the special temporary alcohol license action because we took a motion to grant them the license but we did not have a motion I, I just when you were talking about all that we did not make a motion for for the, uh, the fee waiver so at this point the chair will entertain a motion to waive the fee for the uh, St. John's Church for that uh, alcohol license so move second any further discussion all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Okay, so we got that. You know, is there is there somewhere in there that we can? Do we have a, a, a checkbox, or is there some way that that if we do um, waive the fees for these 501c3s, that we do it automatically, or do we have to always do it as a separate motion? Separate motion. Okay. The policy requires that. Okay. I just wanted to see if there was another way of, that we could stimulate. Well, I'm glad I went back to it. All right, that's great. Uh, okay, does anybody have any? Um, Future agenda items. I do not. Is right. Not now. Thanks, um, so you're good too. Well, so, um, without further ado, then uh, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank, Thank you, everyone, you. and uh, thanks for hanging in with us for uh, for those. Uh, storms and uh, if you have anything please go on our new beta website and check out C click fix that um, gets a very quick uh, uh, tool to get right into town hall to get things taken care of thanks very much